Moravian College football team hosted Franklin and Marshall College on Saturday in Centennial Conference action. The season's first win eluded the Greyhounds before Saturday's contest at Rockwell Cavill Field, but where they lacked in wins, they made up for in style. Against the Diplomats, then a 4-2 football team, the Greyhounds said, why not both? Moravian won its first game of the year in a 94-point shootout, 52-42, which included a Greyhound lead of 52-28 in the fourth quarter. It was the first time Moravian hung a 50 spot on the scoreboard since 2000, and the Greyhounds 483 yards of offense were the most in a game since 2008. The Moravian defense set the tone for the day with an interception by Brendan Downey returned for 14 yards, the first of five Greyhound takeaways. That set up the first of four touchdown passes from senior quarterback Robbie Moyer, who threaded the needle to Jimmy McCarthy for the 7-0 lead. On the ensuing kickoff, Kicker David Fumera booted a ball into the wind, and it takes a friendly bounce allowing Noah Miller to recover the ball and the Greyhounds take over. Fumara finishes the possession with a 23-yard field goal, his third of the season. Fumara tied a school record with seven extra points in the victory, and also connected on a school record 67-yard punt in the second quarter. He also set a new school record with an average punt of 53 yards. More from the Greyhound defense in the second as Kevin Bracken rips the ball from a diplomat ball carrier to set up the offense at the Moravian 46. That sets up freshman running back Chris Negron for a four-yard score and a 17-7 lead. The tailback finished with a career-high 218 yards, the sixth highest total in Moravian history, and the first 200-yard game by a Greyhound running back since 2005. The defense was enjoying watching the Greyhound offense, so they continued to get the ball back in their hands with an interception by Noah Miller. On the first play after the pick, Moyer hits Liam Nolan with a 25-yard touchdown pass for the 24-7 advantage. On the Diplomats' next drive, sophomore defensive back Anthony Orlando scoops up a fumble and returns it 45 yards to the house in a Centennial Conference Play of the Week nominee. Orlando finished with a team-high 12 tackles and recorded Moravian's first fumble recovery for a touchdown since 2007. The Greyhounds stretched the lead to 38-14 before halftime on a Moyer touchdown pass to Jalen snyder Scipio, capping an 8-play, 73-yard drive. The second half began the same as the first with a Greyhound interception, this one by senior Reese Judge. Later in the third, after an F&M score, Negron gets his second touchdown of the day from four yards out for the 45-21 lead. F&M scores again, but Moravian responds with the second Moyer to McCarthy connection of the afternoon to cap the Greyhound scoring in the fourth quarter. The Diplomats would attempt to come back, scoring two more touchdowns, but the Greyhounds hold on to win 52 to 42. I think we got it done during the week. We, we had a great week of practice. You know, the guys were very focused, very attentive to what we were doing, had great energy. So. Uh, you know, we came out and, uh, you know, we didn't capitalize on that first drive, but had a nice drive um, and, you know, got us in a, you know, down into the red zone. <clears throat> came up with a big turnover on our first, you know, defense possession, which was great. Scored off that and then had a big special teams play. So I think the three phases came alive right in the beginning of the game. And that's the thing that we kept talking to the guys about. We've always seemed to finish strong, but we never really started fast. And Saturday we started fast and it really paid off for us in the long run. After Saturday's big win, um, the team were really pumped up after the win in the locker room. Everybody celebrating. It was a great win for us. First one of the year, and we're looking forward to the next three and try to finish the season four now. Robbie, like I said, all along you know, this year, he's been managing the game very well. There's no question about that. Chris, I think, just really had the hot hand. I mean, he had great vision. Uh, you know, he made some great cuts you know, at the second level and having some defenders miss him. He had a great burst through the line of scrimmage when it did open up for him. And Robbie did a great job of knowing when to give it to Chris and when to pull it and get his yardage also. So those two were really clicking on Saturday without a doubt. So that was great. And that opened up the perimeter, you know, to get touches for, you know, Jimmy McCarthy and Jalen. You know, we really kind of ran, a, you know, a, a quick and go route. Uh, they got Liam Nolan, a you know, 25-yard touchdown reception with no one around him. So when we can run the ball effectively like that, we can certainly do a little bit more in the perimeter of our pass game that showed on Saturday. The number one reason the offensive line did a great job, opened up the holes, and they got onto the backers, and I got to the second level, and then from there it's just me and the defenders, and they were how to do. They played with a lot of confidence. I thought we did a great job controlling the line of scrimmage and moving the line of scrimmage. 
Rich. Um, you know, Julian DiGiacomo was a, you know, had had one heck of a game on Saturday, was a big time vocal leader for us out, out in the field on Saturday. And I think everyone kind of fed off his energy and enthusiasm, you know, Stephen Paradiso and Max Neese and Dan Smith and Jacob McKee, um, you know, all really gelled together and, and had, you know, just a great overall performance by those guys. It was great to see. You know, from Brennan Downey getting a pick on a deflected ball to Noah Miller jumping, you know, a route and, and you know, just getting after that, you know, you know play was great. Um, you know, Kevin Bracken ripped the ball away from a running back on a run play and was in a great position and just, you know, really just ripped the ball out of the kid's hand. So, you know, that was great to see. Race Judge made a great play down, you know, downfield and they were driving. So that was a great way to get the ball back. So I think the guys really did a, a phenomenal job in their preparation during the week and that they expected some of those things to happen. Like I said, you know, Noah's you know, play was a great example of that and jumping that route, something that he saw all week and, you know, he played with a lot of confidence. He saw it, went and got it and, you know, is giving the ball back to our offense and getting more opportunities for them. These guys have been phenomenal all year. And, and, I, and I told the guys, um, you know, that, that did the game on Saturday, the TV guys, about how well we practice and how hard we practice, how much energy they have. And, you know, if they were to see us and not know our record, they would, they would not believe that, uh, you know, we were a winless football team going into that F&M game. So, you know, I tell those guys all the time, you know, I have two sons that are my blood and I have another hundred that, you know, that I've kind of taken over as my sons. And, you know, and, and believe me, they do everything I ask them to do. So I, was, I couldn't be more proud of their effort um, on Saturday and how well they played together and, and represented, you know, you know their, this college and the whole Moravian football family. It was great to see. <laughs>